Hello programmers! This is a continuation on my Hello World Pi game um, tutorial video and I'm going to change this Hello World to be a little frog that's moving toward a pond. And to make room for that, I'm going to change the dimensions of this window. So the code that we were working on in the last video we had a window with a length of 400 and a height of 200. I'm going to change that to allow it to be 900 by 500. Another thing is I didn't find the font very easy to see. Um, so instead of having the font being yellow, I'm going to go back to switching that to black. So 000, that tuple of colors will say um, no red, no green, no blue. That makes for a black color font. And instead of saying hello world, I want to give the user some information on how they can make a little frog icon move around the screen. So I'm going to say uh, maybe move with WASD, or you could move with any characters on the keyboard, but that's, that's what I'm going to do. And that will move the frog toward the pond. Hopefully the user will move the frog toward the pond. All right, so just running with that, we can hit run, run module, and we get this window has popped up. It's bigger. We have some instructions to the user. So that looks good. Um, now, how would I get the frog to appear on the screen? Well, I put a link to this program on GitHub along with two images, one that's a frog that I, I drew and another that's a pond. So I use them in a, a different um, game for my app development, but I thought I'd use those in this video too. So there's two things we want to put um, on the screen. One's a frog, so I'm going to name the variable for that just frog. And that's going to get from Pygame, it's an image that we have to load. And just to make things easier, I'm going to put the images in the same exact location as this script, my hello pygame.py, whatever, wherever this is stored. For me, it's the downloads folder. Wherever this is stored, make sure that the frog image is in the same place. Otherwise, you could put a full path here um, and say load it from a different path. But just to make the code a little bit easier, I'm going to say my frog and my pond are both in the same location as my Python program. So I just copied that line and I'm going to change the second occurrence of this line. Instead of frog, it's going to be pond. And instead of loading the frog image, we'll load the pond image. All right, now that I have those stored in variables, I want to make sure that every time we're drawing the screen, we're also drawing those images. So I want it to happen. I don't want my frog to be hidden by the message of how to move. So I'm going to make sure it's the very last thing before we do that display update. So the order matters of the order that you're drawing these things in. And in fact, I want to make sure that my pond is drawn before the frog because the frog might be on top of the pond. So that window variable, I want to blit or add an image on top of the window that is the pond. And I'm going to put the pond in the lower right hand corner. And if the window starts at zero, zero in the upper left, and it's a size of 700, then roughly 700 would be a good position to put the pond. And if this isn't right, we can, we can update that. And then I'm going to say 300 for the height, 300 from the top, and make sure I have the right number of closing parentheses. And the next thing I want to do is blit, put in my frog image. And we'll put the frog in the position. We'll start the frog in the upper left-hand corner. So the left-hand corner is zero, zero. So I'm going to put my frog in zero, zero. And with no other changes to this game, let me scroll down so you can see the bottom of the program because it doesn't fit nicely on one screen. We're going to start execution in main. While the user hasn't tried to quit the program, we're going to keep going through this loop of drawing that window over and over. And the image is going to draw, the draw window function draws the green background, and then it draws the font, and then it draws the pond, and then the frog. So we'll go ahead and run this and see how it looks. All right. 
that's a huge improvement over the Hello World program already. So right now, if I hit WASD, the frog unfortunately is not going to move because we haven't added that code. So I'm going to hit X on the upper left corner. That is the event saying I want to quit. Um, so then it ends up running changing run to false. So let's check inside of this loop that we're infinitely going through until the user quits. Let's do some additional checking. So this one, I'm going to indent it so it's within the while loop but not in the for loop. I'm going to create a variable called keys and that'll be whatever keys the users hit on the keyboard and pygame key get pressed you could even hit more than one button on the keyboard at once, but we're going to see what they have currently pressed. And if the keys that they pressed, if one of the keys they pressed was an A, we're going to have that frog move to the left. So K for key and the letter A on the keyboard is pressed. If that was pressed, we want the frog to move to the left. But right now there isn't a variable that has the frog's initial position, so there's no real way to change it. So in the beginning of this function main, I'm going to make a variable frog info that has the position of the frog. So I'll do pygame and then if I create a rectangle that's 00, zero 50-50. So that's giving you the position, the X and the Y position of my frog, and then what is the width and the height of the frog. So that could be interesting if you wanted the frog to grow when it hits, you know, when it hits the pond, it could double in size or something. We could just change that part of the rectangle. But in this case, I just want the frog's position to move. So I would say that that frog info we want to change the x position and say let's go ahead and subtract one and another way to write this i don't know if i've in my videos used the minus equal but that's some, the same thing as saying i want to combine the assignment statement with some subtraction so i want to take the frog info x and subtract one and put that back into this variable so you could have also done the minus equals to shortcut that. Okay, so we are changing the frog's position, um, but right now we're not taking this frog info variable into consideration when we're drawing the frog on the window. Uh, so I'm going to pass that in to the function draw window. So if it has a frog info, then it can draw that frog in the appropriate position instead of the frog always being in zero, zero, we can do frog info X and frog info Y. All right, I'm excited to run this and to see the frog moving across the screen. Right now, the only key that's gonna work is the A key, but we should be able to hit A. Oops, I have a, an error, that normally happens. Um, nothing ever works on the first try. So let's see where I mistyped something. So, oh, um, my variable name was keys, not keys press. So this has all the keys on the keyboard that the user might be pressing at this point in time. And I'm gonna look inside of that and see if they pressed the A. Okay, and we'll go ahead and run again. And I'm going to hit A, and oop, it's going to the left, which is correct, um, but let's program the other keys because my frog is quickly off the screen. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the X on the upper left corner, and I'm going to pause this and copy and paste my if three more times. All right, so there are four keys that I'm looking for. I'm looking for A, S, W, and D, and the A is going to change the frog's um, X position and subtract one so it moves to the left. The D is going to move the frog to the right. And then the W and the S are going to change whether the frog's um, going up or down. So instead of an X, I've got a Y in two places for the frog info. So let's go ahead and hit run and we will cross our fingers that the frog can move closer and closer to the pond. And I'm checking and all of those keys seem to work. And you can even hit two keys at once and have them do a diagonal to the right or the left. Um, 
Right now, when he gets to the pond, nothing happens, but notice he's on top of the pond. That's because in my draw window function, I have the frog drawn after the pond's drawn. So let's make something happen when he gets to the uh, pond. So that's gonna, I'm gonna be putting that inside of the function for rendering the window or the, the draw window function. And right now I have it always saying the text is move with WASD, but I'm going to change that if the frog's X position and Y position tells me that he's on the pond. So if the frog X is greater than um, the pond X, and that should work, except I haven't drawn the pond yet, so I'm just going to hard code it to 700. And the frog's y is greater than um, 300, I think that's where I put the pond, then I'm going to go ahead and change my message. So even though I just said it should say move with WASD, I'm going to change it and say you win. So it's a short game. And then fill the rest in. We could even change the font size here, or font color here. What if we made it red so it really stands out? Let's try that. So with that small change, when we get our frog to go into the pond, oops, we made an error. That almost always happens, so don't worry. Let's see, with debugging, um, it says no attribute X. Oh, instead of frog, it's the frog information. Information, oh, info for short, because that's the variable we have right here that has his position, not just the image data. All right, that makes sense. Uh, my bad. We'll go ahead and run this and try again. And we can move the frog. I'm getting excited. He's almost in the pond. And you win. All right, so it worked. And we could expand this. The things I would suggest adding to the code is to make sure that the frog can't go outside of the boundary of the game that don't let him run outside the boundary of the game that would be one of the things i would do to improve on this game and we could add some animation we could add some more background characters some challenges some things chasing him or whatever but this is good for our second tutorial on using pi game happy programming